Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. This week I'm going to talk about fast pass selections since I actually can do fast passes in June. So I'm super excited for my upcoming August trip so I figured that I would talk about fast passes and everything you need to know. So let's talk Disney. my shirt makes me feel like a Disney princess. It kind of gives me like Aurora vibes, like how it's like off the shoulder and like it's purple. It's not pink or blue, but just the style of it. I got it from like Forever 21. I think it was like $9. But anyway, on to what I actually want to talk about, which is fast passes. <clears throat> so if you guys have ever done a Disney trip before, especially more recently since they've done all like the virtual fast pass instead of like the ticketed fast pass. It's something that's really convenient and it's nice because a lot of parks will charge you extra for fast passes whereas when you go to Disney you get fast passes, you just get them. So <clears throat> first thing you need to know is that if you're staying on property anywhere, um, which I am, you can make fast passes 60 days in advance. However, if you're not and you just have your ticket and you're not staying on Disney property, you can make it 30 days in advance. I highly recommend whenever your time is to do it right then. I know me and my family kind of make a big deal about staying up late and um, waiting for our time to hit and then going on and doing our fast passes. So as soon as you can do it, do it because certain things will fill up. Which <clears throat> brings me to my next point, which is that when you are making fast passes, um, know what you want to do and know that certain attractions are more popular. So I've kind of made a list already about what we want to get and what, um, what exactly, what order like we need to get them in. Because a lot of people think, okay, well, fast passes. We'll start with our first day at, I think ours is at Hollywood Studios. Our first day, or no, it's at Animal Kingdom. Our first day is at Animal Kingdom. So we'll get all Animal Kingdom fast passes. Then we'll go to the way I'm trying it, at least this time, and I feel like it's gonna, gonna work out for the best, is if there's something you want in each park, like for example, with the new Slinky Dog Coaster opening up in Hollywood Studios when I'm gonna be there, that's gonna be a fast pass that a lot of people are gonna wanna get. Same thing with Flight of Passage, um, anything like that. So all the bigger rides, I'm gonna actually go in and try to get first. So the first thing I'm gonna try to get is Flight of Passage because those go really, really fast. And then the second one, I'm gonna go ahead and skip to the day that we're going to um, Hollywood Studios and then I'm gonna grab the Slinky Dog one if I can get it. And then after that, I'm gonna try for Frozen Ever After. Just know that the big ticketed ones are gonna go faster, so it might make more sense for you to kind of skip around and get all those ducks in a row, and then as soon as you have those fast passes secure, you can go ahead and worry about getting like other fast passes that you would wanna do. So along with that, each park has a different tier system. So all of them vary. Now, Animal Kingdom didn't used to be on a tier system until Pandora opened. Now they are on a tier system, so for Animal Kingdom, the only two rides that are a tier one are Flight of Passage and Navi River Journey. So know that you can only get one of those. Personally, I would opt to get Flight of Passage, but if you do have younger kids that might not like more intense rides, then Navi River Journey is a great one. I just feel that Navi River Journey is very short and just, it's not worth a long wait, but if that's something you wanna do, do it. Another thing I would recommend doing is getting a fast pass to one and then doing standby for the other. So, with that being said, when 
rope drop happens because you will need to be there. When I worked at Disney, I know that whew, people would, there was a time when I got a, I want a backstage tour of dinosaur. So me and my coworkers had to get there really early before the park opened to do the like ride through with the lights on, to walk the course, all that stuff. And when we got there, I want to say it was like 6.30 in the morning when we got there, there were people already lined up waiting for rope drop, just waiting for rope drop to get in. And then once they let you in, they'll let you in a little early, but you still have to wait for the actual sections to open. And then when Pandora opens, it is a mad house. So you could get a fast pass to one of the rides and then ride the other one. Or you could use that opportunity to go the direction that no one else is going and ride things like Expedition Everest hundreds of times in a row. Or I know when we got out of Dinosaur, we all headed to Expedition Everest because it was still so early and rope had, it just they just had rope drop. So everyone, everyone was in Pandora and no one was doing the other rides. So that's a good time to have downtime in that too. So you can look at it that way. But they run on a tier system. So those are the only two tier ones. Everything else below it is a tier two. And you get three fast passes. And so you can pretty much do whatever with that. Also, kind of jumping around here, once you use the last of your third fast pass, you can get more. So I kind of recommend that, although a lot of people say don't get fast passes early in the morning, it's actually not the worst thing to do. I mean, yeah, you don't want it first thing in the morning, go rope drop something and ride something while there's no wait. But it is good to get them out of the way in the beginning because once you get them out of the way, you can get more, which is nice. So then moving on to Hollywood Studios, I actually have a list here so I don't get it wrong because I don't want to mess up what tier ones and tier twos are. So tier one, you can obviously honestly say that Slinky Dog Coaster I'm sure is going to be a new tier one because it's so popular. Um, so that'll be definitely a tier one. Beauty and the Beast, Live on Stage, Fantasmic, Toy Story Mania, Rock and Roller Coaster. Um, and then everything else below that is a tier two. So that's kind of nice, especially for me up until Slinky Coaster, because we would always get a fast pass for Rock and Roller Coaster, and then we would get one for Tower of Terror, because I love Tower of Terror. And it actually surprises me that it's not a tier one, because sometimes the wait can be really bad on that as well. And then for Epcot, once again, another one that runs on the tier system. Tier one is Frozen, Illuminations, Soren, and Test Track. And then tier two is anything else. And then Magic Kingdom, you can do whatever. There is no tier there. There are no tiers in Magic Kingdom, which is nice. Um, my, my Magic Kingdom fast passes usually end up being things like Splash Mountain, Space Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain, pretty much all the mountains. Um, normally what I try to do is I'll get one I'll get one or two that I know me and my mom will ride, and then we'll get one fast pass that I know my dad will ride because he'd rather stand in line with us than us do like fast passes when he's getting on it and then have him sit and wait for us while we wait in line. Um, as far as Epcot goes, that's a struggle for me because I always go for the Soarin' Fast Pass, and here's why I do that. Test Track, if the wait is super duper long and you don't have like small children, you can always do single rider. Single rider is quick and no big deal. Another reason I do it is because I have many times, especially while doing my college program, got a fast pass for a test track and not been able to use it because it rains. And it doesn't even have to be raining. If there's a thunderstorm within a certain radius of the park, they will shut it down. And once it's done raining, raining, you have to wait for it to come back up and for them to test the ride. And then if there's another thunderstorm, because it's Florida, you're in trouble. So that's why I personally would always opt in just taking the Soarin' Fast Pass over it, because you have other options for test track. Um, the next, so Animal Kingdom, we're going to do Flight of Passage and then probably Dinosaur and Expedition Everest for the other um and then for hollywood studios like i said we're gonna plan on slinky coaster and then tower of terror and i'm not even sure what else we'll do um the last thing i do want to talk about is shows because a lot 
of people opt for their fast passes for the shows. And that's great if that's what you want. Um, out of all the shows that I would say it's worth it to do would be Fantasmic. And I know that's a tier one, so you're taking not only your tier one, but when you do a show, you're also getting rid of any other possibility of having a fast pass that day because until you use your third one, you can't get another one. So what happens is you have this one at nighttime and you have to stand in line the rest of the day. But with Fantasmic, that is a show that does fill up pretty quickly. So if you don't get a fast pass, I would recommend standing in line a little earlier to make sure you're gonna be able to actually see the show. It's a wonderful show. I love Fantasmic so much. So definitely go see it. If you feel you need a fast pass for it, that would be the one to do it. Um, as far as River of Lights, um, you can probably get into it with a standby, but I wouldn't freak out about it. If you've never seen it, go see it. But if you have, you probably know that it's a good show, but it's, I wouldn't say fast pass worthy. I just don't think it's something that I ever need to see again. I mean, I would like to see it again, but I don't definitely don't need to. Um, then I'm not even sure, do they still do fast passes for Happily Ever After? I'm sure they do, but, um, <laughs> Because I know with Wishes, it was like you stood in the hub grass, but, or they had like specific like sections ripped off for you. I don't even think they do that anymore. I don't know. Uh, I know they do like the dinner parties and stuff like that, but ultimately, as long as you get there at a good time, and even if you don't, normally you can get a decent spot, but definitely get there early if you want a really good spot. Illuminations do not get a fast pass for. I worked in the American Adventure Pavilion. I love Illuminations probably more than most people. I love Epcot more than most people. Um, which I actually got Spaceship Earth shoes the other day. They're like Adidas. They are so comfy and so cute and I am obsessed and I cannot wait to wear them to Disney. But Illuminations is not a show you need a fast pass for. If you do fast pass for Illuminations, it's just like a small roped off area. But Illuminations, you can see all around the world showcase. There, everyone always would ask, where's the best place to watch Illuminations? Anywhere. If there's not a child or an adult or a tree blocking your view, it's a good place to watch it because there are fireworks that are set off along the Seven Seas Lagoon that's kind of just like, you can see it from anywhere. So it's not, it's not a matter of where you see it, it's just as long as you catch it, and it's not like Illuminations gets like packed to the point where you can't stand anywhere. You'll be able to see it no matter where you are. So with Illuminations, definitely don't do that because once again, that is a tier one and you'd be kind of blocking off what you can do fast pass wise for the rest of your day. So I think I covered everything as far as when you can do your fast passes, you know, focus on what you want to do and what your family wants to do. So like I said, my dad doesn't ride rides. He'll ride some, like <clears throat> Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. He'll do um, Big Thunder, things like that. So just kind of know like, just kind of know what your family wants to do because I would rather use fast passes on me and just my mom and then he can stand in line with us and wait on things that he wants to do. So ultimately that's kind of like, that's pretty much it with that. You just have to make sure that you know exactly what your family wants to do and make sure that everything that you is a must do for you, I would get a fast pass for just in case because you never know. I was in Disney when there were days that It's a Small World had a 55 minute wait and I never thought I would see the day. So if that's something you really, really, really want to do and you're not really worried about anything else, then sure, get a fast pass for it. But um, ultimately just try to get those big, big rides out of the way first. So if there's something like Flight of Passage that you want to get, make sure when it's your time you get that really quick because those do go fast. And another helpful tip, if you do not get it, check. Keep checking every day until you are actually at Disney. Because from my experience trying to get Flight of Passage fast passes, just if you keep trying, you might get one specifically at night. Around 10 or 11 p.m. seems to be 
for some reason, a time where more fast passes are released, either people drop their fast passes or more are released, I don't know, but something at that time, they end up loading in and that's normally when I would get my flight of passage fast passes. And then obviously with Slinky Coaster, it's gonna be hard to get those. So I feel like right now it's just a tough time to get fast passes, but that is all the information I have to give to you about fast passes. I hope that helps you figure out what you want to do for your fast passes and helps you kind of gauge what you need to get ready for. That is it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It seems like a lot of people like watching my more informational videos, so I'll try to do a few more of those in the future. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!